All right, guys, well, we're going to start this video off here. This is the first of three things, four things, actually, we're going to look at today. This is the original 1953 APA baseball cards, 1953 season. Um, and these are the old long uh, form envelopes. If you know your APA lore, that should mean something to you. There's a beautiful looking Mickey Mantle card. And um, there's the back of the cards, which look unused. $2,125 uh, ended not long ago. Up next, the vintage original 1955 APA set, same seller, ended around the same time. These also look beautiful. There's a little bit of writing on the envelopes, but they are also the original envelopes, and they look like they're fine without holes in them. A lot of cards in this vintage have holes, um, or I'm sorry, envelopes have holes in them. Cards look beautiful. 1956 APA, this one actually has a card from the company. We'll take a look at this one. There's the mantle. There's the uh, Jackie Robinson. And uh, you can tell <laughs> uh, J. Richard Seitz sort of hand typed this. There should be 320 uh, different players' cards in the set, um, but errors can um, happen and stuff like that. And um, it would require too lengthy a letter for us to explain what we're doing, of course, as uh, J. Richard Seitz would always say. And so uh, if you don't like it, then that's just too bad. One more that we're going to look at here really quick. This is uh, an auction that ended, I think, very, very recently. Um, uh, yeah, it ended on uh, Saturdays and just the other day. Original 1955 APA season with roster ended up uh, selling for less than $2,000. This one was underpriced, especially since these roster sheets are extremely rare and hard to find. This is another very, very nice looking set uh, with cards that look simply excellent. Um, I think he has a picture here of every single card, so it might be worth it to grab for those of us who are sort of APA historians and who are interested in that part of the history of the game. You have 20 cards per team uh, for uh, all uh, 16 teams. I think they're all there. And so there you have it. Um, uh, I had these in the list with the 1954 game, a complete set of cards, but decided it would be better to have them auctioned separately and so on and so forth. Um, I wonder if he went over to the forums first to offer it up. It doesn't really matter either way. And so the reason why we want to look at that um, is because I found out about this over on Facebook. And people were talking on Facebook about how, oh, well, it's so foolish to spend $2,000 on this app. I said, why would you do that? Now, I know that the app game company is reprinting these old sets, the original single column sets. But I need to remind you. Just as I did with the original 62 Stratomatic Season uh, auction, that this stuff is rare. It's not like there's a whole ton of these out there, right? APA sets, if you're investing in APA, I say investing in APA sets from the 80s and 70s, you're a fool because there's a ton of that stuff out there. That's like buying 1980s junk wax tops packs or Donruss packs from like 88 or 89, right? There's so much of this stuff out there, you could probably wallpaper your room with it and have more than enough money left over to do whatever else you want. I mean, there's just tons and tons and tons of this stuff out there, and there's not that kind of demand. But when you're talking about early 50s, there is demand, and it's not going anywhere. Somebody was saying, oh, well, in 10 years, most of us in the hobby will be dead, and then this stuff won't be worth anything. I strongly doubt that that's the case. The reason why I doubt that's the case is because I thought that same thing 20 years ago, and look, it hasn't happened. In fact, the prices have been kind of edging their way upwards. Again, as I say, you know, the same thing holds true for that 1962 Stratomatic season. Somebody corrected me, I know, on the uh, video and said, oh, well, actually, you know, Hal Richmond came out with cards for 61. Yeah, but it wasn't a full season's cards. I mean, you know that. He came out with all-star teams. That's completely different. We're talking about cards you can run a replay with. That starts in 62 for Stratomatic. That's the reason why I say that 62 Stratomatic set was the equivalent of 52 tops or the equivalent of the 1950 APA season in that it's extremely rare. There's not a whole ton of them out there, and it's unique, um, and it's very special because it's the first of its kind. These other 50s APA sets are not necessarily the first of their kind, but they're very, very hard to find. They are worth quite a bit of money, especially hard to find in what looks like unplayed condition. And it's the sort of thing that one of these days will end up uh, either becoming a museum piece or in the collection of some baseball card collector who knows about this stuff. Now, to all of those who think that uh, the games are becoming unpopular and they're going to disappear, I want to tell you a story. All right, and this will explain the other tags on this video. Back um, in uh, when I was a teenager in 1997, 98, my friends and I played a lot of Magic the Gathering. I mean, we played it like crazy. Every day at lunch, we play Magic the Gathering. 
To be honest with you, um, I think we enjoyed uh, arguing about the rules more than uh, playing with the game and thinking about the fantasy cards. We knew about all the cards. We knew about the lore and the history of the game. Those of you who know about Magic will say, well, you know, uh, you came in a little bit late, right? All the good stuff had already been made and was long gone, right? And it kind of is true. I mean, we would buy older sets, but we would never find anything that was really earlier than uh, maybe revised if we were lucky. Right, um, a fourth edition and fifth edition made up the majority of my cards, along with some Ice Age. And even then, I mean, you talk about like Tempest, you talk about um, Urza's Saga and stuff like that that came out. We didn't have a whole bunch of that stuff. We didn't. Um, we had some, but not a whole ton. Um, it was the uh, stuff around fourth, fifth edition that was cheap because it was overproduced. Now, I went away from Magic uh, starting when I was um, in, so I ended, stopped playing it after ninth grade was done. When I got in high school and 10th grade, didn't care. Sold all my cards off to a kid in 11, when I was in 11th grade for about 100 bucks and used it to go buy a guitar for my friend. And um, even when I look back, I think it was probably a good deal considering how used those cards were. Um, and you can imagine my surprise back in 2015 uh, when at work I encountered a man uh, going to the United States um, from the Philippines who was going to America to take part in a professional Magic the Gathering tournament. And I asked him, being so naive, if he was playing Type 1 or Type 2. Of course, it took me a little while uh, afterwards to figure out that uh, Type 1 and Type 2 were no longer a thing, and that you had this thing called Modern, uh, and then there was Vintage Legacy, and um, Standard is what people usually started off with, but you didn't last too long in Standard. And uh, that's when I became surprised to know that though Magic the Gathering had uh, suffered in popularity for a while, it came back pretty quickly afterwards. And though at the time I looked and thought, oh, wow, I could get like a Scheherazade for, I think it was about $100 back in 2014, 2015-ish. Um, the truth is that a lot of people thought the same thing and there was a lot of buy-in back into the sets. Now, it is true that a lot of this came from nostalgia, that there were a lot of people my age who ran into money thanks to the pandemic and who started to buy old cards so they could have their toys from the past back. That is absolutely true. But what is also true is that a culture developed around Magic the Gathering that wasn't around before. You had people like Talarian Community College. You had Alpha Investments. Um, you had a bunch of other people come up and create... Uh, uh, videos on YouTube that were actually fun to watch that talked about these games and talked about the issues involved with them and uh, not only uh, gave something for people who were interested in the games to watch but gave old timers like me who were never going to be tricked into spending money on magic cards again uh, something else to watch and to enjoy and to think about and reminisce on right that's the issue that you have right because that comes out and that starts up all of a sudden the demand for the cards and for the game starts to increase and it increases regardless of what the company does i bring this up because it's not necessarily the case that you're going to um, absolutely see apple or stratomatic cards go up in value but the chances are pretty good that it might happen because this is one of those hobbies that does well in social media. And so if you have somebody who, I don't know, is making videos on YouTube about this or making posts on uh, uh, Facebook or writing posts about this on a blog or uh, writing about this on message boards over on Reddit and so on and so forth, uh, people might become interested in it. People might look the game up. They might want to look up how to play. And they might start becoming curious, especially if people tell stories about these old cards and point out the sets that are actually worth money and the things that are actually rare and the things that you can collect that some of us um, have never seen with our bare eyes. That's the point, and that's what I'm saying, which is that this card set today might be worth, I don't know, what was it, $2,300 for one of these seasons? But if things continue the way that they are today, if, say, I don't know, somebody on YouTube makes a bunch of videos talking about these games, if the popularity increases because young people, people interested in the sport and others, have a way to see something that isn't just OOTP, have a way to see something else that's out there in a different way of playing, and eventually are told that, well, it might not be as nice looking or as fancy, but the stats come out better, or there's a better normalization system, or look at how much fun it is not to use real life lineups. If you have something like that that exists, that might just might increase the demand for some a product like this. So be careful about it. Be careful about simply concluding that everything is going to fall apart as soon as the uh, generation of baby boomers dies off. You don't know what could happen. And uh, there are some of us out there who are trying to sort of reverse some of the trends. I'll talk with you again later. Bye-bye.